Hey there, everybody. Welcome to video eight and the final video in the basic electrical series. You've hung in there. You guys have been troopers. Um, I know it's been a long route, but now it's time to talk about when things go wrong because cars don't ever come into your bay because you uh, because they, they're just, oh, just check up on the car, make sure everything's good. No, they come in because there's a problem. The light won't light, the lights are dim, the horn is too quiet or isn't as loud as it used to be. Um, there's, there's always problems, right? Either a circuit doesn't work or a circuit doesn't work the way that they, uh, they were intended. So with that in mind, we are going to uh, talk about what happens to the circuit when things go wrong. All right, so there's only two types of faults. Some may argue there's three, but I will tell you that there's two. There are either high resistance faults or there are low resistance faults. Um, if we're talking uh, the argument of what about component faults, components gen pretty much always fault in either a high resistance fashion or a low resistance fashion. So it could be argued that component faults are either going to fall in the category of high resistance or low resistance faults. Neither here nor there. Let's talk about what happens during these faults. So let's talk high resistance first. What that means is um, our circuit is not working properly due to an unintended increase in resistance in the circuit. What does that usually cause for us? Well, if we increase resistance, we decrease amperage. Therefore, we are not going to have a circuit that either either works properly um, as far as like brightness or, or loudness of, of components um, or it will not allow any flow at all. So let's look at the different ways this can happen. Probably one of the most common ones is corrosion. So um, I'll try to get some pictures of corrosion or toss a YouTube video in here of uh, what corrosion may look like, but it's that sort of fuzzy, powdery looking, uh, like green, bluish material that will build up on electrical connections. Um, that corrosion is uh, partially due to oxidation, um, kind of like rust, but not in the same way. And it's this sort of buildup that happens, but that corrosion actually will will use up voltage and produce a heat. Now, obviously, it's not intended, but it will use up voltage. So there's a problem there. You're taking a circuit and turning it into pretty much another series circuit because we're adding another unintentional load in series. Um, but it's also going to increase the resistance in your circuit because it's doing something. Therefore, it is going to decrease the amperage in your circuit. So if I have a light bulb circuit like so, and I end up uh, with corrosion on the fuse, on the switch, or let's say we've got corrosion build up on the grounds. Uh, grounds are not insulated. Oh, stupid reflection, you probably can't see there. Um, but grounds are not insulated, therefore they have the um, uh, tendency to sort of corrode faster than anything else. Anything that is exposed is, exposed is going to be... Um, at high risk for corrosion. So if we have corrosion buildup on the ground here, it doesn't matter where it built up, it turns it into a series circuit. And uh, what it'll start to do is it'll start to steal voltage and increase resistance. So this light bulb will no longer be as bright as it was. Common problem to happen. If it was a motor, that motor might spin slower. If it was a horn, it would honk a uh, lower frequency. So. That is what corrosion would do. A loose connection, meaning I don't have as good of a connection. Maybe my connection surface area was this much and now it's this much. You create a restriction, almost like a kink in a hose. And so you, you are going to limit the amount of amperage being able to go through that circuit. Um, there's a couple different things that can also cause intermittent on and off issues. But loose connections can be high resistance faults. And then the ultimate in high resistance fault is the term open. And people like to term, uh, like to use the term open and short in the same category. They are so opposite, it's not even funny. So next time you hear somebody call an open a short or a short and open, you should tell them something because the world will be a better place if more people knew the difference between an open and a short. So opens. What is an open? It's exactly what it sounds like. The circuit is no longer connected, meaning no continuity. So if my fuse pops, 
that turns into an open circuit, no continuity. If my switch is broken and won't close, that is an open circuit. There is no continuity. If my light bulb burns out, there is no electrical connection. There is no continuity, no continuous path for current flow. If I break a wire or I, I lose the connection to my ground, there is no continuity and therefore no voltage can drop, no work can be done, no current will flow. And that's what an open circuit is, is it is the ultimate in high resistance. If it's completely not connected, you have almost infinite resistance, right? And there's actually a number to it, but depending on how far away it is. But um, it's essentially the ultimate in high resistance. If I've got infinite resistance, I have nothing for amperage, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So that's what an open circuit is. Now let's talk about the symptoms of high resistance faults. Common symptoms of high resistance faults, if we're talking loose connection or corrosion, we could be talking about, um, uh, like I said, slow motors, dim lights, um, uh, uh, lower horns, right? Loose connections and opens can be either intermittent faults, like maybe sometimes a circuit works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, or if it just completely doesn't work at all, but the fuse was not popped, then we know that somewhere there's an open circuit, right? Either a wire is broken, a component like a switch is not closing, the light bulb is burnt out, um, connection is broken. That is an open circuit, and that would be a symptom of an open circuit. You're never going to pop a fuse because of an open circuit. However, a popped fuse becomes an open circuit. So hopefully that's not too weird for you. But uh, let's talk about low resistance faults because low resistance faults are a little bit easier to remember um, because it's the opposite. So if we decrease our resistance, then our amperage goes up. So the problem with high resistance faults is that our resistance goes up too high, so the amperage goes too low for the circuit to work properly. In a low resistance fault, we have the resistance go down so much that the amperage spikes up. Now we remember that we have protection in our circuit because of this problem, right? If the amperage spikes up too much, our wires can't handle it, things catch on fire. We don't want that to happen. So when, when and how does this work? We've got two different types. We've got a short to ground and a short to voltage. Uh, let me draw my circuit back up here. We'll put our fuse back in. We'll put our light bulb filament and our wire back in. We're going to take away our corrosion here. Now in our properly working circuit, sorry for the glare, guys. Um, if we have a short to ground, that means that electricity was able to take a shortcut past the load. The load is the work, right? So if electricity is going to go into the load, it goes to work and then it gets to go back home after, right? What if you gave it an opportunity to take a shortcut, not have to work? The only reason it's called a short, by the way, though, is because it's before the load. So uh, just keep that in mind. Everything we're talking about right now is before the load. If, say, a wire rubbed bare to chassis ground, right? And we touch ground before the load. You gave electricity the opportunity to either go to work and then go home or just go straight home and hang out on the couch and enjoy a nice uh, apple juice. What would you do? I know what I would do. And that's exactly what electricity does. It goes back home to sit on the couch and drink some apple juice rather than have to go to work. Right? You gave it the option. Imagine they both still get paid, right? So why not? So what electricity does is it goes straight back home. The problem is, is without the light bulb in this circuit, what's the total circuit resistance of a circuit with no resistance? Let's see what that looks like on Ohm's Law pie chart. If I have 12 volts and no ohms at all, how many times can I take zero out of 12? 0 out of 12, 0 out of 12, 0 out of 12. I still have 12. We could do this forever. And so we get an insane amount of amperage. We get a fireball is what we get when we get this issue. That would be 
a short to ground. So the amperage increased so much, you would get a fire. Except we put something in place for that, didn't we? We have circuit protection on our side. Thank you, fuse. The fuse is going to pop. Therefore, we don't allow current to flow anymore. So this short circuit, the short to ground, then turned into an open. Know the difference between them because they are not the same. One led to the next, okay? Um, but not always. You can just have a broken wire that happened because mice chewed through it because they like that. Um, all right, so that is short to ground. The last one I want to talk about is short to voltage. And this one's always a lot of fun to diagnose. And it's hard to not laugh at the customer when they're trying to explain to you the problem. So let's say I've got one circuit where I've got my uh, brake lights, right? Here's my brake lights. I know there should be three, but just bear with me. We've got our right and our left brake light. And because we, we don't wire everything all separately, we put things in harnesses um, so everything looks nice and clean. So let's say um, I also, coming off of the same area, had my horn, um, put our fuse in there. Here's my horn switch to control my horn. Well, a short to voltage is when these two circuits, sorry for the glare. So we can see here there's a little bit of physical overlapping. Now, because of insulation, normally these circuits are completely electrically separate. But what happens when a harness wasn't placed really well or maybe somebody added something aftermarket and it's like squishing down on the harness and the wires end up chafing and rubbing together and the wires eventually touch. I'm using the wrong color here. Um, what if they became connected on accident? So what would happen is every time you press on your brake pedal, the horn would honk or every time you honk the horn, the brake lights would turn on. That is a uh, short to voltage. Now I will tell you, a characteristic of a short to ground every time is a popped fuse or melt it some once in a blue moon when you're getting real lucky the fuse will actually fuse together as it melts and you'll end up catching a fire that's uh you won the lottery um but nine times out of ten nine point nine times out of ten a short to ground is going to lead to a popped fuse a short to voltage may or may not lead to a popped fuse a symptom of a short to voltage is going to be um a, when I apply one circuit, another circuit is applied unintentionally. And then also, what did we do here? Didn't we add a third branch to a two-branch parallel circuit? We added more lanes to that freeway, didn't we? Depending on the amperage flow of the branch that is accidentally added, you may pop a fuse or you may not, depending on how much of a change in amperage for the whole circuit you have. So those are the two different ways that, um, or, or the two different types of faults. In next week's section, we're going to talk about how to test for some of these things, uh, how to use the digital multimeter, uh, how to test for what an open circuit looks like, uh, short circuit, things like that. Um, so we're getting more to the dynamic part of it, the more of the real life part of it. But understanding these these uh, just basic stuff, uh, are, these fundamentals are going to make you so much more well-rounded as a technician and you're really going to increase your capability of what you'll be able to do once you add your real life experience. So um, that's it for this week's videos. Um, make sure you guys do your homework before you did the test and I will see you guys next week.